degrees. Greg Riley joins us today. Greg, mm -hmm. what do you got here? Lots of colors over there. Lots of colors. This is a macaw. Now, specifically, what kind of macaw he is, he is going to be a blue and gold macaw. He's beautiful. He's absolutely gorgeous. Now, there are a variety of macaws, <clears throat> and basically, this little guy is going to be located, if you want to say, find him in the wild, right around from Central America all the way down to South America. Sure. But macaws can go all the way up in north, as far north as, like, say, Mexico. Oh, wow. very good. Okay, and could we have something like this as a pet? Uh, yeah, definitely, certainly. But the biggest thing that, you know, why he's here today, and his name is Lucy, mm -hmm. um, is that, one, he's absolutely incredibly intelligent bird to have mm -hmm. as a pet, but there are a lot of things that you need to keep in mind when you want to have a pet like this. The biggest first thing is that, one, his longevity. Now, we were talking earlier. <laughs> he's going to out, outlive your kids. He's going to outlive your kids, possibly. I mean, I'm in my early 40s right now. He potentially can live up to 40 to 50 years old, and right now he's at three years old. So wow. technically, I could be in my mid-80s to maybe early 90s oh. before sure. he could actually pass away. And other bird species and things, they can live to be 80 and 90 years old. So Correct. again, make sure that if you're looking for a bird like this, an exotic pet that you... Uh, know the lifespan and the, <laughs> the definitely know, there, sure. know the lifespan and also have a like I say a plan B because a lot of these macaws are very social animals and they'll bond to like usually just to one or two people okay, okay. so hypothetically like let's say if Lucy bonded to Abby and if something should happen to Abby you know Lucy potentially may be a little bit lost mm. um, the biggest other thing is that they also have a variety of behavior problems if they get bounced around from house to household Sure, and they, they are a lot of work. We had one growing up in our house. Uh, we had a conure parrot, which is basically an exotic bird like right. this. I mean, it's not uh, one of those. But again, they're, they're a lot of work. Uh, but again, they were a lot of fun to have around, too. I mean, it was interesting as a kid <laughs> talking to the bird all the time. Maybe that's why I'm crazy. I do they know. get much bigger than this? Um, they can, uh, you know, usually right around about, I think, about 68 inches or so, I think is what I've read. Um, but Dave is absolutely right. Uh, they're not like, say, having a dog or, say, a cat sure. where you can just put a bowl of food and just kind of walk away for a while. you got to keep the, you know, there's a, there's a lot of maintenance to them as far as, you know, keeping the cages clean. Right. Uh, keeping, you know, they do a decent job of keeping themselves clean. But, right. you know, you're right. Like, my dad was the closest one to the animal. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, you know, my brothers and I, when we didn't really get too close to it. I mean, we mm -hmm. did, but it was definitely bonded strongly uh, to my father. What do right. they eat? They can eat a variety of things, uh, like fruits, seeds, nuts. <laughs> Remote control, the wood around the window. <laughs> well, yeah. I noticed he was giving him little bits of wood during the break. I'm like, are you, why are you feeding him wood, Greg? Well, he doesn't eat wood per se, but what they do <laughs> like to do oh, hi, is baby. they like to play with wood, and okay. they'll kind of chew on it. And then what that does is also kind of help uh, relieve some stress. But their beaks are incredibly powerful. I mean, they potentially could take off a finger. Oh. It happens pretty rarely. Uh, but it also, you know, really demonstrates how strong they are. I mean, they can actually go through a walnut shell pretty easily. Yeah, and they're not going to be able to chew through the cage or anything like that, but, right. they, but they definitely do have <laughs> some, uh, and they're fun animals. They really are. They're definitely uh, just some work. And again, we had, uh, we'd always set them outside when it got to be in the 70s and 80s to give them kind of that, uh, you know, feel of home, if you will, when it was mm -hmm. warm and, and kind of muggy out. They really enjoyed that kind of weather. Right. So you definitely need to <clears throat> probably get a lot of information before you decide to bring one of and these your homework, parrots right. like Lucy into your home. Right. And if you want to visit Lucy, Lucy's over at the Pet Food Center, and he's basically just kind of hanging around on top of his uh, cage. Beautiful bird. Well, thank you so much, Greg. We appreciate it. Very good. As we go to break, here's another look at how you can get a hold of Greg Riley. You're watching News 10 this morning on WTHI. We'll be right back.